Man, are you serious? MC Shad, are you serious? Really? Really, dog? <laughs> Talk to you like X. What? <laughs> That's all it was when I heard it. I'm like, see, I didn't have to hear anybody spit a rap. And by the way, this is the truth behind what's going on with the uh, KRS-One and MC Shan, how they revived a 30-year battle, okay? And let's go over it from the tippy top. Let's take it from the top, everybody. What went wrong with MC Shan to drive him so insane? Everybody know KRS-One already dethroned you 30 years ago. And Shan is cold. Don't get him wrong. Shan was nice. Nice and sick with his flow. But here's the problem. You going up against the Blastmaster KRS-One. Battling is his domain. You don't give him in that lane to come through. You just set it yourself up for the spike. You just got set, and you set yourself. And all he finna do is zoom, come down on top of you. Cause you're not, you can't, there's certain people you just can't defeat. This is one, you cannot beat KRS-One Blastmaster. It's not gonna happen. You might as well erase that. I don't know what's wrong with these people, man. I swear I don't. Listen. I was sitting back watching the video, and the video was telling, and if I was one of his homies, if somebody was there with Shan, I, I'm quite sure he was just hot and going off the top, so he just blew up, but here's the thing, he, he saw the uh, interview where KRS-One was talking about how he finished MC Shan, Shan just got, man, I'm tired of this man talking about how he finished me, man, and on the interview, it was the worst, it was the worst interview. He must have just been emotionally hot. And he was like, man, I got a five page rhyme in my drawer. I'm like, man, forget all this, man. This is, I ain't never lose the KRS-1. We never battled, man. We never battled. Forget all that song for song, man. We need to do it the old school way. We need to do it. Mike to Mike on the stage, and I don't want no music. I'm like, this guy is really giving him all the ammunition he needs. If I'm a battle rapper and I see this, the guy that wants to battle me, he's giving me all the ammunition I need. I'll be like, it's over. He's done. <laughs> Forget all that, man, rhyming off the top of your head. Man, F that, man. Let's get a pen and pad. I'm like, just somebody need to grab him and just say, interview over. Don't print this. Don't put this out to the public. Because Shan looks stupid right now. He looks really stupid right now. We need to stop this entire interview. Because Shan looks like an idiot right now. <laughs> Sitting up there talking about that. That's like you can see Jay-Z Jay like, man, I'm tired of Nas, man. And I'm going to make a response to Ethan right now. That would be the dumbest thing he could ever do. It was, it's so dumb to go back to the way you lost and try to redeem something from 30 years ago. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. The only thing you're going to do is make it worse. It's like, man, you tried 30 years later and still got your ass kicked. <laughs> That's all they're going to say in the bridge. Because <laughs> before you had a little respect, now that's just going to get washed away. You're going to go back on the crack after this. Because... I'm telling you, Blastmaster, I knew what was going to happen. I'm like, he getting fed all this information from this dummy. Because you don't understand. You sitting over here, your weakness is already being exposed. That's like going on stage, man, I'm a battle. You on stage. I don't want no music because I don't want the crowd. I want them to just focus on the lyrics. I can't have this light blaring in my face. No, man. Okay, now let's go. And you, I got to stand right there. I need this room to be 72 degrees temperature or it ain't going to be right, man. You already mentally screwed up. And like, I didn't even have to listen to the song. I knew it was over. 
before it even started. And sure enough, he's already in alluding to certain things that he's been having to rhyme. Man, but I mean, I want to get paid for mine. You know what I'm saying? I got to get paid. I'm like, you dummy, you ain't finna get no money. Because you too stupid to get money. You gonna sit there and do it for free. Sure enough, he does an acapella for free. He go, yeah, I'm gonna drop the three minute bar because he couldn't do it. He couldn't help it. He wasn't gonna hold out for no money. Shane looked like the type of guy that's gonna hold out for some bread. No. He been holding out for 30 years. Still got nothing. So Kara's one wanted him to apologize for the words he was saying and that's when he got hot and put out a three minute freestyle where he went in and the bars weren't whack. They weren't whack. It's just that, yeah, you got off, you were lyrically, yeah, on your thing, you do it at acapella. Yeah, it was cool and all that, but you lost. <laughs> I knew as soon as he was done, I'm like, you lost. That interview shows you lost and this three minute thing that you didn't prepare See, this is why when people freestyle battle, the majority of them, it's off the head. It's to create creativity. Sure, they might have a couple of bars in their head that they got saved up and stored up, and it's the word playing the trick. But the, the real reason you win a hip-hop battle is because you're mentally over the top of your opponent. You know what they finna say. You can use what they say against you against them and crush them with it. And they can't recover. And you got the whole crowd mind all, all, all on your side. And they came with you. So now you're really under the pressure. I love when that happened. When they bring their own crowd. Like, yeah, I got the crowd with me. I brought them. And then you say something to get their crowd like, man. And I'm like, look, I done got your crowd. <laughs> they rooting for me. <laughs> now it's all over. Now you really lost. Because the pressure's really on you, not me. You brought them. I'm cool being on the road. <laughs> I love it. Because <laughs> I'm going to take your head off. <laughs> and I'm going to look at their face when I'm doing it. <laughs> and they're going to be like, we didn't know this was going to happen. We thought we was going to win. <laughs> exactly. And that's why you don't go into battles and prepare written rhymes. Because you can't prepare for when things go left. You need a plan B, C, D, E, F, G. Because you going in with your written thing. And you're like, yeah. And I'm spitting this. And I'm like, whoever you wrote that for, that must be amazing. Because <laughs> you definitely didn't prepare that for me. This is for you. <laughs> and they don't know it's for you. And you personalize it. Certain people can take written stuff and make that seem like it's personal and put in the battle. Other people can't. Like Shan had this prepared pipe for months. Like, yeah, I've got this round for him. And set that out like Chris couldn't come right off the dome and crush that. Which he did. <laughs> so Kara's one, you know, talked about how he ain't the blast master, he ain't blasting nothing. And how he was the MC, the coldest one, you know, braggadocious rap style, trying to be clever with the wordplay, queens. Now, here comes Blastmaster. Blastmaster come over, smack you in the face with common sense. He gonna school you, sun you. That's how you win. When you could sun your opponent and talk like you're the godfather of the rap game. And this is the, the disobedient student who hadn't learned a lesson. And you have to teach him again. Those, those MCs win. Because they know how to make you smaller. And he just went over there. You still haven't learned your lesson. <laughs> and. Hey. It was over. That's, that song he got Stan. Hugging the nut. Well, still hugging the nut, Shan. It was over. I ain't even have to listen to it no more. Because <laughs> he still ain't learned the lesson. That's exactly what it meant. 30 years and it took for you to man up. 30 years for you to stand up. It's over. Right there. 30 years, dog. It's been 30 years. 
get over it. It's the 30 year anniversary of you making KRS-One's career. 30 years since you made this man a superstar. So you got no one to blame but yourself. If there's somebody could play this for Shan, please do. MC Shan, look. I got your records. You're dope. In 1986, you was the man. In 87, I still mess with you. It was all about Shan. You know what I'm saying? I mess with you. You was an MC. You was ahead of your time, I thought. Lyrically, with the wordplay and all that. But you sunned yourself. And you should have known that. And you should not, you should walk away from this thing right now. Because what's going to happen is, if they do put it on stage, you will be embarrassed. You will lose, and you will be embarrassed. Because there's no recovery from it. Okay? You smoked crack. You alluded to that in the rhyme. I don't smoke crack no more either. Never was supposed to smoke crack in the first place. But you don't give nobody that in, as ammunition. So they can use it against you in a rhyme. You see what I'm saying? You don't say I smoked crack. That's like somebody, yo, I used to suck cock. But I don't know more. <laughs> you don't do that <laughs> in a battle rhyme and try to make a point. He's going to allude to the fact that you smoke crack. <laughs> And it's factual because you admitted that you used to smoke crack. This is going to send you probably back to the pipe. One hit, two hit, three hit, four hit. <laughs> the Blastmaster KRS-One is always thinking long range. <laughs> Why would you wake this man up? Leave him be. You don't wake up the beast. You think Ice Cube said, I'm finna go in here and battle with Karras? What? No! You leave that alone. LL didn't battle KRS-1. You let the blast master be. That's what you do as a man. Most of you young guys out here watching this video, you're going to be like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> but for the rest of us <laughs> who in our 30s and stuff, we know, okay? We know about K KRS-One, MC Shan. This is like the biggest battle that was ever on the stage and on the scene at the time. So, of course, we know about it. But the most of these young kids, they don't. So that's why we have to reiterate a lot of this stuff from the back in the past and it comes to the fore, to the light. Now I'm quite sure they're here now because they'll probably be on Vlad TV somewhere. So, and then that guy, uh, DJ uh, uh, Mathematics or uh, something like that, uh, Arithmetic or something. Yeah, he got a thing too where he, He's probably going to put out something. That DJ Arithmetic. So, when he put out his thing, you know, they, then everybody going to see it there too because he's got a lot of followers. So, people are going to come on to his thing and then it'll blow up. So, on that note, I'm going to say peace to everybody. <laughs> this has been a fun hip-hop night from the past, from 30 years ago. They both gave us some good hip hop. Shan, you jumped off a bridge. Now, the bridge is, is not over, but it's over for you. <laughs> so, let's stop right now. Somebody need to grab Shan and say, look man, why don't you write for one of these young people? You know, try to write something down for Meek Mills. He needs all the help he can get right now. <laughs> so, that's what needs to be done for him. But on that note, it's your boy Carcino, I'm out.